back. We're on this 2015 Chrysler Town & Country still. It's a 3.8 liter. If you've seen the other videos so far, we've done an oil change and we've done a mid motor mount on the bottom. Um, we're still going to be doing some struts and we're still going to be doing some uh, lower control arms and such. So now I will want to change this motor mount right here. So I am at the front of the vehicle and to my left right there. Why do they call it a motor mount? Why is it not called an engine mount? A motor is electrically propelled. This is an engine. This is not a motor, but it is what it is. So on the last one, we put up a couple jack stands in the back. You can see the tires are off the ground. I've got a jack that I have jacked up when we put in this motor mount here. And all we did was support the engine. We did not lift the engine. We just supported it. So if it goes up, you're up too far. So you're just going to support it, take the weight off the engine. We're still at that point. So we got the air breather here, or the air box we're going to take out where the air filter is. We've got a 10 millimeter wrench here. We're going to go ahead and pull this hose with a flathead, 5 16 or an 8 millimeter, whichever one you choose out of the three. And then we've got a wire clip back here. Yes, you could pull it off here and disconnect this hose and move it, but I'm going to be using impact and I want to be able to get straight up and down on top of that motor mount engine mount is what I want to call it right so let's go ahead and get started let's get the 10 millimeter and let's get that clamp off and get that wiring and of course this hose right here is just going to pull right out okay so we pulled this bolt out we're going to need that out in a bit we went ahead and unclipped the clip here for the air filter there's one on that side I've loosened up this nut and I pulled this plug out the back now the back on that plug you'll notice you just can't squeeze it down and pull it out that's because you need to slide that clip out first with your bolts, you know, let me show you something that I do here. If you have a bolt bin, great, throw it in, coffee can or whatever. I like using these little trays. Notice how the first bolt I put out, I put at 12 o'clock. That just helps me. The little jobs like this, you really don't have to do it. But if you get into the habit, it's nice. And just start laying them out, one, two, three, four, five o'clock all the way around. It'd be a whole lot easier when you put them back. Especially when it's a magnet and it holds it in place for you. Okay, so let me get off that subject. So we're going to go ahead and pull off our air, air filter inlet here. And we'll set that aside. Now we can pull our air filter out. Now's a good time to inspect this air filter. And then we need to remove this box. If I can get it out with one hand. She's in there good. There you go. And now this box has to come up. Okay, we're going to grab an 8 millimeter here. I like these little ratchet wrenches. Right down here on the bottom, I'm going to take this little bad boy off right there. That's going to enable you to lift this box out of here. And we need it moved all the way out of here. You can get it most of the motor mount there, but the bolts that are back up in there, very tough. So it only takes a second. And when you're down this far, you just have this one more bolt. So let's pull it out and get this box out. Okay, now we got that out. It's going to stay in its place. Right in this area, you're going to have a rubber mount that you're going to need to pop it out of its hole. Right there, see that? That went right on top of that mount right there to the left of your motor mount bolt. So, right here. So that had to come off of there. All right, so now we can get at most of the motor mount bolts, and we needed that room too to maneuver that thing up and out of here. Let's try not to mess with all the wiring and such if we don't need to. You got a couple pieces right here that are on a clip. Do you see that? That's gonna pull right out right there. And this is gonna lift right up. Just use a screwdriver and pry up right up underneath it and pull it up. Same with this one here. If you have to, you may use a pair of pliers. These are little boogers to get out. So worst case, wiggle left and right as you pull up. Don't try to just yank straight out. You don't wanna rip these wires. After I remove this ground strap here, I noticed on the new motor mount, there's one on there. Engine mount, right? Engine mount. I noticed there was one on there, so we don't have to peel that. Most of the time they don't come with that, and you'll have to snap it on here and here. Reason is, is because there's rubber in between here, and you want a good ground connection for a lot of the things that are connected in that area. Good ground is very important to these engines. So, we're on the left motor mount bolt now. Let's go ahead and buzz it off. We'll buzz it off, and then right up front we got three. Bam, bam, bam. And remember, our engine is sitting on that jack with that piece of plate steel. No pressure, still sitting the exact same height. No pressure at all, we're just holding it there. I hope that makes sense. Let's buzz those out. Okay, so so far I've taken off those two bolts and again, I'm continuing clockwise, right? So now if you look, see how she's loose? No pressure on it, no weight on it. We take these other three off and this engine's not gonna go anywhere while we remove this engine mount. So there's our last bolt. And look at that. The mount is completely loose. 
the engine's in the same position. No stress, no work. Well, until now, right? Now I need to maneuver this out of the wire. I don't think I need to explain that to you. You just got to get it to wiggle up and out of there. And I need to use two hands for this, I believe. So let me get her up and out of there. Looks like that was the best way. So she was sitting like that. You just pulled it back, twisted it, pulled it out, twisted it again, and pulled it out. So there's our old one. Out with the old, in with the new. Let's get this one put in. And we're going to run everything backwards. Push it back in there. I'll be putting my bolts in backwards. I'll be running these three first, these two next, blah, blah, blah. Let's get that in. I have not ran them down, but I did set them in the exact same order backwards. They're just sitting in there. And then these two here are sitting in there. Why did I do that? Because if I run these down and tighten them up, this might be on a little bit of a pickle. And when I try to put these two in, it may not line up my holes and I have to go back and loosen them my hair. So this is why I do it this way. So now we can just go in five times, by the way, I'm using a 15 millimeter. And I just go in five times and zip, 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 zip. Wish it would have came out that easy, right? Okay, so let's get this stuff out of the way. Let's get our lower box part back in there. Again, I told you this is the time to check that air filter. That thing is dirty, so we're going to blow it out a little bit and recommend they get another one. Okay, so we put our 8 millimeter, tightened it back down in there. We had our 10 millimeter here that was tightened back down. We had our 5 16 here or flathead or 8 millimeter. All three will fit that. Tightened it down and we put our clip back in the back. And of course our PCV air hose to the valve there. No bolts or nuts left, so we did a good job, right? So other than those tools, the 10 millimeter and the eight millimeter, we used a 15 millimeter socket and we used a flat head there. So I hope this video helps you out. Please click like, please click subscribe. Click on my name underneath this video for all my other how-to videos, including this stuff that we're gonna do to this 2015 town and country. And as always guys, enjoy.